My name is Susan McVie. I'm the director of Acumen. We are based at the University of Edinburgh. Acumen is an interdisciplinary research centre. We do predominantly policy-based research which focuses on three main areas, crime, education and urban segregation. Our research teams are based on a range of different uh, universities, some of which are based in the UK, including mainly Sheffield, Manchester Metropolitan and Glasgow universities. We also have collaborators who work in a range of other countries and one of the important aspects of the Acumen research is to not just look at um, inequalities within the UK but to understand it in the context of comparative analysis with a range of other countries. Our main aims within Acumen are to advance new theoretical ideas so that we have a better understanding of how inequalities manifest within society and within communities. We're also interested in advancing new methodological techniques and approaches to using data that tells us more about how inequalities are spread across society and how we can better understand and analyse those. And we have a very strong programme of engagement with policymakers and practitioners so that we can influence the way in which public policies and interventions are developed that are aimed at addressing key social problems and reducing inequalities in society. Basically all the, the difficulties that are more common at the bottom of the social ladder become much more common throughout society. That's true whether we're talking about uh, violence or poor educational performance or loss of social cohesion or measures of child well-being. They all get worse in more unequal societies. Not just a little bit worse, but much worse. And although they are problems which are more common at the bottom of the social ladder, all of us affect it, not just the poor. The aim of our conference, Rediscovering Inequalities, was really to connect people together from across a broad range of different diverse disciplinary areas and different sectors of working around this key theme of inequalities. The work that Acumen had been involved in over the last three years, although it was involved in looking at different policy areas, had identified that inequalities was at the heart of much of the social problems that we were analysing, so therefore we felt this was very much a a good opportunity to bring together people from not just those areas of interest but a wider range of subject disciplines to address this issue in more detail. The reality is that crime is highly differentiated. It varies tremendously across different spaces of the cities, typically what we consider as neighbourhoods. Some places have very high rates of crime, others have low. The differentiation among neighborhoods or communities within cities has always been strong. What's different today is that the level of crime has declined. So we've seen a tremendous drop in the crime rate. So it's kind of a paradox that you have lower crime, but it's highly uneven. So you have different rates of change, which I believe is a major topic for investigation. In Acumen, we've set out our research goals to explore crime patterns across different cities. We've also set out to explore crime patterns within cities. Now, part of that exercise also requires us to say, what do crime patterns have commonality with in terms of other inequalities? So we examine different forms of inequalities and their relationship or association with crime. It's not just important to discover these things, what Acumen sets out to do is to try and explain them. So whilst our work involves large-scale quantitative analysis, all our research is founded on a strong theoretical foundation. And it's that foundation which enables us to ask questions of the patterns of crime that we see in the city of today in comparison to the city of yesterday. When you study inequalities across generations, I think it's very important for, uh, for example, to take into account uh, family factors, because we know that socialization is so, such a big deal in this. Socialization about values, for example, uh, aspirations, but also, of course, structural factors come into play, such as inequalities between families, so resources of different kinds, not only the softer resources, but income, uh, housing, uh, segregation comes into this as well. 
And segregation comes in, I think, uh, quite a lot by schooling. So differences in schooling, in the setup of schooling, the quality of schooling are quite important and should, I think, be measured in, in, in such an endeavor. The argument education research has focused on finding the, out the mechanism through which social inequalities but also gender inequalities are reproduced within the education system and the labor market. And we have done it through comparative research, looking at different education systems and different labor market systems. For example, we have looked at the role of curriculum choice in secondary school in Scotland and in Ireland, but also in the US, on the chances of getting into higher education, how this curriculum choice may disadvantage advantage different social groups. So we discovered, for example, that people from less advanced social backgrounds tend to um, choose vocational subject which may be more geared to labor market outcomes but actually they tend to restrain the possibility or to, or to reduce the possibility to go into higher education and this has clearly policy implications for widening access into higher education. The challenge that cities in the world today are facing are how to create cities as machines of equal opportunity because I think so often our cities become machines of unequal opportunity. If many of our societies are aiming to be societies of opportunity, not just for the advantaged folks, but for the middle and lower classes, we have to think about how we're designing our cities because right now I think our cities perpetuate inequalities in ways that I don't think we're aware of. By suggesting that cities are organized in ways to make an unequal playing field for opportunity uh, is not to say that human agency is absent, is not to say that collective action is impotent, but simply to say that, at least in an American sense, the ideology of equal opportunity and everybody can just make it on their own, it's a myth. And it's a myth because of the way we build our spaces. Another important finding in our acumen research is this idea of social frontiers. So there's been lots of work done on segregation, of course, over the years, but what's remarkable is that there's been very little done looking at where you have neighborhoods with a steep social frontier. And by that we mean a very big change in, say, the ethnic makeup or the religious makeup of one area that's right next to another. So a classic example might be Catholics uh, and Protestant areas in Belfast, which were living cheek by jowl, but concentrated segregation, but it's at the frontier that we saw a lot of the tension and a lot of the violence. Remarkably, there's almost no quantitative, robust work, and our project, I think, is one of the, possibly the first to look at this issue, the impact of steep social frontiers. And one of the key organisations we are aware of and worked with, and me personally over many years, is Aquaman. Uh, the research it's done is particularly useful uh, for two reasons. One, I think the quantitative nature of it is particularly valuable in the world I live in to be able to uh, support and back up and explore issues through really good quantitative analysis, but particularly their recent work on inequalities, which I would say is the biggest single issue uh, which is underpinning the work of the Scottish Parliament. Research into inequalities is vital. Whether you're a, uh, an academic, a policymaker, a practitioner, some on the front line that actually evidence is, is critical to all of that because ultimately the end of the line there is someone living in inequality. What this conference has done is really highlighted the way in which this evidence that we've amassed and these data uh, sets that we have could be used by practitioners and policy makers and third sector organisations to really change things on the ground, to put in place better um, strategies and better interventions that will reduce inequalities in communities across the world.